Hello everyone. I today I'll be telling you how to apply for the Chinese government scholarship. We started a um, few days ago. I shared a link on Facebook and on WhatsApp and several of my friends would like to know how to apply for the scholarship by themselves without seeking for the help of an agent. So I'm going to tell you how to make the application. Now in EGP you'll be done. Believe me, it's um, not as hard as we think. It is easy. If you have your files attached on your system, you can just do everything you want to do in a short moment and you'll be done. I freak out a lot and when it comes to stuff like this, so I will try as much as I can to make it easy for you. So you type in study in China, study in China, the CSC, that is Chinese Government Scholarship Council, csc.edu.cn. So this is the page that comes out, it comes out in Chinese and then you click on the English, translate it to English. So it comes out this way because you're a new user you would use your you need to click on create an account you fill in your details just same way when you want to open a new account your username your email address make sure this is correct um, your password confirm the password and click on the validation code if it doesn't go you have to click on cannot see clearly so that it refreshes itself and you impute the new validation code and submit so it submits here it submits mm -hmm. and so let's go back to uh, the sign in and apply you impute your name your username or your email address your password and the validation code and the validation code let me try a new one. V N K Z. Okay. So I'm in now. I'm using my phone, but when you want to make applications, because you're going to attach some files to to for the application, you need to use your laptop. So if you open it on your laptop, you will see. Um, you see the application online on the top left of on the top left of the of your desktop or your laptop but on the phone is on the top right here click on application online this is how it comes out never mind it's on red by the time you're done with the application it will be green and it will show submitted to so the green and it will show submitted so okay this is uh, uh, what you're going to fill in just a couple of them so here we have the program category the program category I'm going to explain what this means here you have three types of um, categories the type A, type B, and type C. Type A are for people who want to, foreigners who want to apply through the Chinese embassies in their home country. If you want to apply through your the Chinese embassy in your home country, you put impute type A, and you're going to be using the agency number of the Chinese embassy in your home country. Then you have type B. Type B are for foreigners who want to apply directly to the universities by themselves. If you feel you may not stand a fair stand, uh, you don't have a fair opportunity from your country, or you're going to pay some money and you may not afford it, or you feel you just want to try it by yourself, you try, you have to impute the 
type B. And I will advise you to use the type B to use the type B because it gives you the opportunity to choose the school you want to go by yourself. If you go by type A, you're going to be the university, the country, your country, your home country sends you to. But for type B, you're going to make your choice to research about the school and choose the school you're applying to by yourself. Type C, they got the CSC sends send the special link to them to apply through. So we have type A and type B as op as options that many foreigners apply through. I will advise that you apply through this type B. So you click on that type B and um, here you have the agency number with the agency number of the particular school you are going to or the particular um, or the Chinese embassy in your home country. The agency numbers are easy to get. You can just Google them. Type agency number of the university you want to go to and it appears. Or you can type search for scholarshipfellow.com I've already placed this link on the description box so you just open it go to download open the download under download you see agency number and several other things you might be interested to click on and the agency number when you open the agency number scroll down you will see the universities with their agency numbers attached to them this is seemingly the most important part of this of this application and it's very easy to get because if you don't get it you cannot complete your your application and it will get submitted. So just like this one you have one zero one eight three for Zulu University. You have that's how you have all the numbers, similar numbers for all the universities. So here you can see how it comes out shows you firstly save please move to the pers to personal information and you may choose to give it a color to show that you've completed it maybe blue um, green for yours and um, maybe if it's incomplete you can give it ye yellow or orange maybe if you have not done it at all you can give it red depending on your choice of color and the color you would remember and what it represents for you. And one wonderful thing about about the this kind of this application is that whenever if you are not able to finish it at the point, you can still come back later to it. You can still do it anytime, just save the part you've done and continue later. It's very good. It makes it very, very convenient. For applicants so let's go to the next one the next one is a personal information you click on the plus collapse it opens up to this your name and passport the passport you're referring to here is your international passport you cannot travel outside your home country without the international passport so you write your name as it appears on your passport, the given name and your surname. If you have a Chinese name, put it on. You can just type none. And your date of birth, gender, gender male or female. If you're married, you impute that. If you're not, you impute that. Um, your country of birth just as it appears on your international passport okay you choose your city of birth Christian your religion you type in Christianity or Muslim Islam or Buddhism whichever one nationality you choose 
your country, native language. If English language is the official language in your country, you may have to type it. You may not find your your native dialect here. So your passport number, the date of expiration, your telephone number, fax if you have, and if you don't, you can type none. Your email address and your address here. The then this, the this part is um, still like the first part you filled. Current contact information. If they are the same thing, you may just have to copy and paste here. Your phone number, your fax, the email address, and your number. Then you save. Then verify and save. Because our information is not complete, it will tell you you must complete all the information. So, if I'm still waiting for my passport to become to come out, maybe I just need my passport and I don't have it yet. I may just click on the yellow or the orange. Whichever color you choose and continue to other ones. Education and uh, employment history. Here you can put in your the highest education um, you've attained. If you're going for PhD. You have to put in your MSc, MSc the school where you did your masters. If you're going for masters, you have to bring in your the school where you did your your degree. Let's assume that you're going, you are applying for a bachelor's degree, and um, you did your secondary school at. Dennis Memorial Grammar School. Dennis Memorial Grammar School. Then your field of study could be science or art. Science or art. Let's assume it is science. And because you are applying for BSc. The highest you have is SSPE. So now I'm just typing the years you spent in school. That should be six years. If you got admission around 2010, you're expected to graduate by 2016, right? Yes. So you type in the date you got admission and the year and the date you got you graduated. They should correspond. The years should correspond with the certificate your you are submitting. If you have other, if you are going for your BS, for your master's, you may have to put your BSc here, your first degree here, and um, your SSCE here. Very important. Just upload the education, uh, your Your education certificate. Employment history. If you had work, you have to write the name. You are expected to write the name of the of your employer where you work. Maybe you work at Promacido, for example. Promacido Nigeria Limited. What engage? What what was the position? Um, what did you do at the workplace? As the last ship sailed towards the distant horizon, your title. What were you? Maybe your manager. Maybe your manager. And then you now write the date of. Uh, 
the employment duration when you got employment and when you left the job. For work engaged, you, you may have worked as a as a, as a management and administration office. Management and administration. Or human resource office and you're the manager, maybe human resource manager, or you're a sales clerk manager or sales. Sales or clerk, whichever one. Then you verify and save. Same goes on for the language proficiency and the study plan. If you have, if you have learned Chinese before your home country, you are expected to type in your Chinese proficiency, whether it's for or none or excellent, whichever one is okay. When you come to China, if, even if you have not learned it and uh, you have not learned it in your home country, if you come to China, you get, you you be given a year study, a year language course, because most some, most of the courses they offer as scholarship courses are in Chinese, so you may do a year language course in Chinese, gather the basics before you now start on your major it depends on your school and on the course you're offering requirements differ from school to school so if you have the let's assume that your chinese was good if you have a chinese proficiency certificate you may have to write it here HSK Chinese Proficiency Certificate. If your English is good, good. You type it. If you have any 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 certificate you have obtained, any exam you've written, any English exam you've written, I have to help. You put it here. Okay, then you choose what you are applying for. Bachelor's degree, a master's, a doctorate, or general scholar, or the senior scholar. Let's assume you are going for master's. What's your preferred teaching language? If it's going to be on scholarship, it depends on your school. If your course is being taught in Chinese, please do Chinese. Now, which discipline are you applying for? Let's assume you're going for engineering. Another engineering, which major do you want to do you want to um, study? Let's uh, let's assume agricultural engineering. How long is your course? How long is your major going to last? Maybe it's a two-year course or a three-year course. You just calculate it and put the date as supposed from 2019, which is when this um, particular scholarship starts. This application starts from September 2019 to July of the year you expected to graduate. Now, if, have you ever studied in China or worked in China? Yes or no, depending on your answer. Have you ever studied in China under a scholarship? Chinese government scholarship, yes or no, depending on your um, situation. Okay, now go down to contact. So these are things that are very easy. You, I think you, you have at the tips of your fingers, and even if you don't have them with you, they are easy to find and fill in. So what is the name of the person you may be know of? If you have a contact in China, a friend, a sibling, an organization, you are expected to 
you expected to uh, put you see the name of the person here the person's phone number the person's email address these are just samples examples the person's email address fax if the person have it and then the address of the person in china if you're married include the name of your spouse um, the information of your spouse as required um, your name the name of your parents age these are all guesses type in the name of your parents name and phone name and the occupation maybe business your mother's name and phone name age maybe teacher or business then verify and save verify and save don't forget to verify and see. Now comes to another very important part of this um, application. These are the documents you are expected to upload. And um, it will be easier to get them up. You, you should upload them through on your system or your laptop. Use your passport, the passport photo, your um, notarized copy of your certificate, the, C, the SSCE, your high school certificate, your degree certificate, your master certificate, notarized copy of them. Photocopy them, go to any high court or any high court and um, notarize them very important then the transcripts from your high school or secondary school and um, the schools where you attended get them photocopy them and get the photocopies notarized and the study plan you have to write a study plan to you have to explain why you chose to study the course outside the co outside your home country why you chose china uh, why you want to study the course they also want you to tell what positive impact will your experience and knowledge in china have on your have on you what are you going to do with them uh, in your home country how would this positively improve the relationship China has with your home country. These are things you may be needed to state in your study plan. And you may need to state why you chose the particular university you're going to. There are samples of study plans on the description box. I've already sent the link there. You go to fellowship and um, scholarship fellow.com and um, you get you get some good stuff there. Under download just click on download um, the, the, you see a couple of things under there that you may want to be interested to take a look at you are still to get the recommendation letters from the professors in the high in the institutions where you attended from the professors in the higher higher institutions where you attended And if you cannot get from them, you can get from friends, relations. For example, you just had SSEE and you didn't have professors at high school teaching you. You can get relations who are professors to give you two recommendation letters from two different professors. Now, your passport, your international passport is very important. You will be needing the home page. I'm going to send you pictures of pictures of that of a friend of um, 
you need the data page where you have your information and the next page just the home page we need that page um scan them and upload here the fiscal examination record for foreigners this is um what you do at the hospital you go to a general a government hospital a government hospital either state or federal but it must be a government hospital government approved hospital um here you download the the form and uh, go to the hospital they examine you and fill the form for you chinese universities want to be sure that you are in good and sound health because by the time you come here you may be missing you may you need to be strong you may miss some uh, conditions that you're not used to while growing up so you need to be sound and of course you're supposed to have knowledge of your health status so then the link for this um this medical report is at the description box too. Everything is made easy for you. Please don't forget to like and to subscribe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and send to your friends. A click can, a try can click. That's why I tell my friends, a try can click. Don't lose hope. If you try, it can click and you'll be chosen. You'll be lucky. If you're applying for a doctor's degree, you will be needed and depending maybe for masters too depending on the requirements of your university you'll be needed to attach the papers or articles you've written and published and uh, like they wrote here to be published too is okay you need to attach papers you've published and if you're applying for uh, if you're applying to study my art or music you'll be needed to attach um, your work your work for music in the one tape and then for fine art these color pictures other supporting documents if there is any other documents you would like that um, you have specified above here above you may need to you'll be required to attach them as evidence the language qualifications if you have um, IELTS or HSK Chinese proficiency exam or the TOEFL you are also required to send a copy of them to upload them here and you should also before you start filling this form, I want to advise that you first of all go on the description box and uh, click on the link where we have the university under the CSC scholarship program. Most of universities in China can accept uh, can accept scholarship students, foreigners. So you search out the universities you want to attend and the course you want to attend in the you want to study at the universities you remember the links are on the description box so it's easy for you to click on and set out afterwards you're expected to contact a professor at the university of your choice and then ask him to accept you as a student ask him or her to accept you as a student his or her acceptance um, increases your chance of getting the scholarship I do not think everybody does this, but if you can do it, it's easy. Uh, what you do is um, when you when you determine the course you want to study at the university, set out the professors at the at the department, the professors under those disciplines, the professors that will. That, uh, under those, that are under those disciplines and then search out for their papers the papers that they publish in journal they will be on google just search out their names when you find any click on the 
search out for where you search out for all sub content for the other content click on the other content you will see the email address of this of the professor or at the foot part of the first or second page after the abstract maybe in the introduction you will see the contact you definitely see how to reach the author of of that paper who is your professor so this is how you get his his or her email address and then you send a mail to him asking him to accept you requesting that he accepts you as a student If he needs you to draft an acceptance letter and send to him or her to sign, you the link of acceptance letter, acceptance letter samples are below too. It's easy to get. You can find them also on scholarshipfellow.com. Afterwards, you fill this form. Everything will stay here. Fill this form. Attach your attach everything we've asked we've talked about here we have explained here, including your medical report, your study plan, attach everything you you're required to attach. And then submit. Submit here. Submit here because you've not done everything you need. It should not get submitted. It should not do everything it's supposed to be here. It should not attach this. It should not get submitted. But after you attach them, submit. So that you have to submit. Everything you attach online to the CSP um, link, you are expected to print them. It's better to print them out and send to your university, university of your choice, through DHL or FedEx. These are worldwide, I guess. Through DHL or FedEx, you get you go to your school link. First of all, go to your school link, your, your school admission link. Because requirements differ from school to school, you have to apply to your school too. It's just a page or two pages of your information. I will send you some pictures to tell you what it looks like. Apply to your school. Then copies of this and copies of, of the application you made to your school. Print them out, hard copies and send both to your university through CHL or FedEx. I think that is all, let's see, that is all. So here, um, you will see um, uh, for the documents and the files, please remember to save them correctly the files with the correct file name, the correct title, to avoid making mistakes. Uh, you see the documents that are mandatory and the ones that are not. If you have them, upload them. If you don't, there's no problem. So those ones that it is, it is no. And the language of the IELTS or HSK are not mandatory. But there are ones that are mandatory, like your study plan, your, your passport homepage. Oh, not mandatory, okay. Your transcripts, the notarized copy, they must be notarized. They are mandatory, okay. So you upload them. And you upload them from your laptop or your lap or your system 
to this place. Each this um, document, after you're done with uploading them here, you submit, click on submit, and then you go As to print. Hmm. You go to print uh, application form, and then print the document. You're going to see everything you have imputed. I'm going to send you. I will send you um, that of a friend so that you see what it looks like after you've um, imputed everything and after you are uh, printed it out. That's how you're going to see it when you download and click on print. When you submit and click on print application form. Mm. Before you click on print, any error you anything you feel that um, is not correct or you feel like you need to edit you can withdraw you can click on withdraw and withdraw the document and upload the correct one and include the right the right details but don't forget to save don't forget to click on submit if you do not click on submit your application will remain invalid it will remain invalid so please whenever you make an editing or make a withdrawal remember to click on submit all right all these documents that you have uploaded online you're going to send them to your university check out your university address online and then you send it by DHL or FedEx to your school or if you have a friend in China maybe you send it to your friend in China and the friend sends by express delivery by YD to the school so you're going to print these things out go to your school site your own university site very important requirements differ for school and just fill in their if their page or two pages um, application form. Then you print out both of them, the one you submitted to your school and the one you sent to your to CSC link. And then you send both documents, hard copy, through DHL or FedEx to your school. Alright, thank you for listening to me. I appreciate your time. I hope this um, short video is helpful enough. Please don't forget to share with your friends. They deserve this. They deserve this uh, free lunch. So then, um, because of your choice at another person's expense. It's on the bad video. What do you think? Please don't forget to click on subscribe and like you can also comment say what you feel about the video and what you think we should improve on thank you very much take care